Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Come on, we can do better than that. Good afternoon, everyone. We would like to welcome you to the 19th annual Richard A. Ledinsky Senior Award for Excellence in Public Service Ceremony. We are thrilled to be able to honor some of the great work that takes place in our city each and every day by some of our most dedicated public servants. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into the ceremony. And my job this afternoon is to bring up our mistress of ceremony, who is our esteemed city administrator, our fearless leader in the administration for operations, none other than Ms. Faith Leach. Thank you, Mr. Director. How is everyone doing today? Y'all good? Are y'all excited? I'm excited because we get to celebrate the best of Baltimore. We get to celebrate the fine professionals. I think we can all clap it up for the men and women of Baltimore city government. So uh, my name is Faith Leach and I serve as Chief Administrative Officer of the City of Baltimore. And I am proud to welcome you to the 19th Annual Richard A. Ledinsky Award Ceremony. Today we get to celebrate the unsung heroes of our government. The government workers who go above and beyond the call of duty to make Baltimore a better place for all of us. Many of us have heard, uh, many of you may have heard me talk about how public service is a calling. Those of us who answer the call to serve, we get to commit our lives to serving others, like the residents of the city of Baltimore. That means when it snows or when it rains, Baltimore city government employees, they show up and they get the job done. In 2020, we were faced with what seemed like the ultimate test the COVID-19 pandemic. But you know what we did? We persevered. We served this great city. And we are now mostly uh, on the other side. And it, is in, it is in large part due to the public servants in the city of Baltimore. They showed up to work every day while many of us got to quarantine at home and they kept our city going. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for not, only, for, for not giving up, for pushing through, for innovating, for using data to drive our decision making, for coming up with bold ideas to improve city services. Thank you all for the work that you do every day. Given that our government is filled with so many deserving public servants, you can imagine that it was a daunting task selecting today's honoree. Each submission requires an application, a compelling letter from a supervisor, and two additional letters speaking to the qualities of the nominee that demonstrate their dedication to building a brighter future for Baltimore. For the past 18 years, the Ledinsky family has recognized honored and rewarded city employees that exemplify the characteristics, values, and dedication as their father, a 43-year public servant to the city of Baltimore. Mr. Ledinsky's passion, work ethic, and commitment embody the service that we all strive for every day. Now, I want to bring up Ms. Carol, uh, excuse me, Ms. Mary Carol Ledinsky, the daughter-in-law of Richard A. Ledinsky, to give us a little bit of history about this award. Mary Carol. Good afternoon. I am Mary Carol Ledinsky, wife of Frank Ledinsky, and daughter-in-law of Richard A. Ledinsky, Sr. I begin by sharing the sad news that Richard A. Ledinsky Jr. passed away in November of the last year. Richard was instrumental in the formation and early years of the award. He attended every annual presentation ceremony until recently when his health prevented him. With our family is Mr. Dennis Finnegan, the only original member of the team that established the award and who has served as the historian and senior advisor to the selection committee. We would like to thank Mayor Brandon Scott 
for continuing the spirit and tradition of the Richard A. Ledinsky Senior Award for Excellence in Public Service. By way of a brief history of the award, it was established in 2004 by Mayor Martin O'Malley. It is the only avenue to publicly honor dedicated city employees. The committee meets on an annual basis and has tried to coincide its effort, and it has this year, with National Public Service Recognition Week to consider nominees from all city agencies and departments to, to select a civil servant who receives the original commission award in the shape of the city battle monument, a cash stipend, and the great honor of having their name enshrined on a plaque in the beautiful City Hall of Rotunda. A winner is named each year along with two honorable mention presentations. My husband, who serves on the selection committee, has shared with me his impression of the many remarkable city employees who are nominated and who deserve great respect and admiration for their dedication to the city of Baltimore. My father-in-law began his public service in 1947 and served this city for 43 years under eight mayors. He was always proud of his East Baltimore upbringing and heritage and carried that concern for his fellow citizens his entire life. I witnessed him instill that pride in his children and his grandchildren. One of my famous fondest memories of him was from when I was a newlywed. Dad would visit the Northeast Market every Saturday and he would accidentally overbuy and send home some goodies to Frank and me. I think he wanted to make sure I wasn't starving his youngest son. His love for and dedication to the citizens of Baltimore were unceasing, seven days a week, 365 days a year, whether he was at City Hall or at home. This same around-the-clock dedication is reflected in the career of this year's honoree, Kendall Abu Hakim. Baltimore City will continue to prosper thanks to the commitment of employees like Kendall, as well as honorable mentions Natalie Preston Rivers and Yolanda Wilton, who have displayed the attributes of duty and faithfulness this, that this award seeks to commemorate. Congratulations to each of you and to all those nominated on their recognition of outstanding service to our city. I look forward to the first week of May 2024 when we will again express our appreciation for all city employees as we celebrate Public Service Recognition Week and honor those selected to receive the Richard A. Ledinsky Senior Award for Excellence in Public Service. Thank you. All right, now we get to get to the fun stuff. We get to recognize our um, honorees. And so to do that, I'm gonna bring up uh, my partners in the work. I'm gonna bring up the Honorable Mayor Brandon Scott, who will provide us a few remarks. Um, and then he will be joined by Comptroller Bill Henry, as well as Council President Nick Mosby to present the awards. Good afternoon. So I was telling our awardees that we don't have enough energy for them, so we're going to do it again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's more like it. We are celebrating folks today. Uh, I am proud to be here with my partners in government, Council President Mosby and our Comptroller, uh, and welcome you all, of course, to the 19th Annual Richard A. Ledinsky Senior Award for Excellence in Public Service. And today, uh, we honor uh, an employee, but really employees who exemplify what it means to be a public servant and particularly one who's been serving the residents of the city for a long time. Uh, I often say that being a public servant isn't a job, it's a lifestyle and also a calling. And no one knew that better than Richard A. Ledinsky Sr., who of course is who this ceremony is named after. Uh, throughout uh, your tenure, you may not have heard the words Thank you, good job, as often as you should have, but let me say it today, good job and thank you, not just to our awardees, but all of our public servants who keep the city moving each and every day, who folks uh, don't see 
often what you do. Don't appreciate what you do, but know that I appreciate it. I know that my colleagues appreciate it because it is the folks who are working on the front line that make Baltimore the great city that it is. So thank you all and congratulations to you. But uh, this award really uh, solidifies the dedication, commitment, and loyalty to the great city of Baltimore. In other words, uh, this award is the ultimate thank you in getting your flowers while they're here, as the young people say, and you all are so deserving of it. But uh, today we are honoring a few people. We have our honorable mentions that we have lined up today. Lieutenant Natalie Preston Rivers, ma'am. Stay there, you're good for now. who I won't embarrass with many of the stories. Natalie and I have known each other for a long time. I'm gonna spare her today. Uh, we also also have Miss Yolanda Wilton, who we're uh, recognizing today. Thank you very much, congratulations, ma'am. We want to recognize each and every one of you, uh, but uh, I want to also, uh, especially want to acknowledge and thank the friends and family of Richard A. Ladison Senior for up holding this important legacy, which has become a great tradition in the city of Baltimore and a coveted honor in city government. Today isn't about me or any of us standing up here, it's about you all. Uh, your skills, your commitment, your ideas, and your talents are all a part of what makes our agencies and ultimately our city better. And now I'm proud to say again that Baltimore has the hardest working people in the world right here doing that critical work of helping our residents and moving our city forward. Uh, and uh, the winner of this year's award embodies that. Uh, so without further delay, uh, we want to personally congratulate and award and acknowledge Kimball Abu Hakim, the this year's winner of the this year award. Before we before we bring uh, our honorable mentions up and then uh, our awardee up, I'm first going to pass it over to my colleagues for comment, and then we'll bring them up one by one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I won't be long at all. I'm City Council President uh, Nick Mosby. And as the mayor eloquently said, um, there is no uh, level of service uh, that matches to public service, being a public servant. Uh, it's almost biblical. Uh, when you are faced with maybe harsh conditions in the cold or in the heat, uh, when you're dealing with equipment that's been passed down, some of which from Mr. Ladinsky's time, <laughs> Or, or when you're dealing with uh, you know, conditions that are just not sustainable, working conditions. The reality is the men and women of Baltimore City that put on our shield every single day and go out into our communities to stand uh, and to provide service for our residents, that's what many of them do. Uh, and there is not enough thank yous uh, from your mayor, from your city council, from your comptroller or any other elected official uh, that would match uh, what you mean to the city of Baltimore. Mr. Mayor, I can remember during the time of us in COVID uh, when we coined this phrase, essential employees. Uh, that was a time when America had to stop, uh, but the hard women and men, uh, folks all around the country, but right here in the city of Baltimore, they're the ones that kept going. That's what this award embodies, uh, that we need folks to put on their boots, sit behind a desk, uh, uh, a deal with constituents on a daily basis uh, to ensure that our city and its services are moving despite maybe the conditions that we can control or cannot control are. And that's exactly who Mr. Ladinsky was and that's exactly who our nominees are today. I will close out by saying um, to the amazing Mr. Kendall Abu Hakim, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because uh, you absolutely mean the world um, be, for the city and far beyond even this award that we have here today. Uh, you are an example of what it means coming from our community, giving back to our community, never forgetting about where you come from, uh, be it your neighbor, your friends, or even the family that sits right here uh, in this front row. Uh, so you epitomize what this city lifts up, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you, brother, and congratulations.
And then I'm going to close out because none of us would be here without the, the family of Mr. Ladinsky. Uh, for you ensuring uh, that his legacy continues to live on, uh, it will live on uh, past our time on this earth serving this great city. So we'd like to say thank you as well from the Baltimore City Council. Good afternoon. Yeah, see you warm. Yeah. Mayor warmed you guys up good. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm looking out at this audience, and I, I swear to God, the first thing I thought was reminded me of my wedding day. Was there, there was the bride side and there was the groom side, and uh, I had to I had to I had to, I had to put up with that for for several years afterwards. Um, I. I I can't say anything more than, than what the mayor and the council president have said in terms of uh, thanking all of you for your service and uh, trying to uh, be eloquent in discussing the importance of public service. I, I will note that uh, uh, essential uh, employees did predate the, uh, the pandemic for any DOT worker who had to come in on a day when everybody else was home for the snow. Um, but I will also say that better than standing here and thanking our awardees today with, uh, with kind words, better than offering them uh, certifi certificates and citations that they will be able to display to show uh, their friends and their family uh, how much they are valued by the city of Baltimore today, I'm the guy with the checks. And there's a kind of thanks that you can deposit in your bank account. And that's right. That's right. That's right. So thank you all very much. I like the big heads. I need one of those fat heads. There's some great things we could do at DOT with those fat heads. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're going to get started with honoring our, our first starting with our honorable mention so we're going to start with lieutenant preston rivers We have Miss Yolanda Wilton. All right, Madam CEO. share a little bit of the biography of um, our two honorable mentions so that you know why we are celebrating them and their incredible work um, uh, for the city of Baltimore. So the first honorable mention as we, um, as we have just awarded went to Miss Natalie Preston Rivers. Miss Rivers began working for the Baltimore City Police Department on July 7th of 2000. Um, her tenure with the Baltimore Police Department includes key positions including Sergeant, Lieutenant, Captain of the, North, um, of the Northeastern District, Major of the Northeastern District, and currently as Lieutenant and Liaison for the Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, uh, Mr. Anthony Barksdale. Lieutenant Preston Rivers has mentored numerous police officers over the course of her career and has assisted members in furthering their respective careers. Please join me again in acknowledging the work of uh, Ms. Natalie Preston Rivers. All right, and then our second honorable mention went, uh, went to Miss Yolanda Wilton. Miss Yolanda Wilton began working for the, the city of Baltimore on September 26, 1988. Miss Yolanda Wilton has been a key member of the Healthy Homes team for nearly 35 years. 
I'm going to repeat that part again. She has been a member of the Healthy Homes team for 35 years. Her, her tenure began in the childhood-led poisoning prevention records room as a medical technician, and she worked her way up to become the case management supervisor of the medical unit. She currently leads a unit of professionals dedicated to combating lead exposure of some of our most vulnerable residents. Again, join me in recognizing Ms. Yolanda Wilton. All right. And so now for our big awardee of the afternoon, uh, to, help me, um, to help me bring up this individual, I'm going to ask Mr. Tavon Braxton to join me um, to talk a little bit about the impact that Mr. Kendu Abu Akeem has had on the city of Baltimore. Um, but before I turn it over to Tavon, I know Kendu myself. Um, and I've gotten to know Kendall over the two years that I've been here in the city of Baltimore. And what I can tell you is that there is not a phone call he doesn't answer. There's not a text message he doesn't respond to. There is not a, uh, a roadway that if I call him, he does not show up. There isn't a problem that he doesn't show up with a solution or a strategy to figure out how to fix. He embodies service, and we should recognize him for what he does day in and day out to make our city great. Um, and I also just want to acknowledge Council Member Ryan Dorsey, who is with us today, Council Member Dorsey. Council Member Dorsey calls on Mr. Um, Kendall Abu Akeem often, and <laughs> Uh, that's an inside joke. Uh, he calls on Mr. Kendall Abu Akeem often. And I remember just a, a couple of months ago, I was checking in with Council Member Dorsey, and he was like, hey, when am I going to find out if Kendall won the award? Because he was behind the scenes, and as much as he called on Kendall to fix problems, he also was pushing us to make sure that we acknowledge the service that Kendall and the employees of the Department of Transportation provide to the residents of the city of Baltimore. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Tavon Braxton to introduce our winner. Good afternoon. It's good to see the DLT family in here. Um, my name is Tavon Braxton. I'm the Deputy Director of Operations for DOT. Um, and with all the public service in here, I'm sure we can attest that you know public service is a thankless job, but not today. Yeah, today we get to honor one of Baltimore's own and one of DOT's finest. Um, firstly, congratulations to all the nominees. Um, and thank you, uh, Mayor Scott, City Council, and the Ladisky family. Now, regarding this year's recipient, I'd like to briefly share my experience with Mr. Abu Akeem. Um, it's easy to recognize his presence. Um, you know, the bravado, the style. You know, it's a Baltimore thing. You know, if you, if you know, you know, you know. Um, but beyond the designer sport coat, um, is a disciplined, intelligent, faith-based, pragmatic problem solver and a servant leader. It's that type of dichotomy that is gravitating to the staff of our agency. I've worked along Mr. Abu Akeem for about two and a half years now, um, shortly after assuming my current position. And I was extremely anxious, you know, stepping into the role knowing that I'd be scrutinized for my lack of experience. But I soon recognized that Mr. Abu Akeem shared a similar plight that would foster his resilience and ambition to persevere. I then watched him masterfully navigate and complete daily tasks with unrealistic expectations, many times without support, proving that it's not about your resources, it's about your resourcefulness. With an almost art of war type of methodology, he successfully galvanized and motivated staff to not only exceed performance targets, doing more with less, but prioritize training, career growth, and mentorship amongst our staff. 
uh, as the maintenance division chief, you know, the largest division in DOT, Mr. Abu Akim is motivated by the nostalgia of Baltimore City. Um, his directives are often accompanied by personal tales that are woven into the fabric of DOT assets. Whether that's a street light that was once the meeting point for he and his friends, a bench that abutted the bus stop where he waited to be transported to school, or the redesigned roadway that once served as an entrance to his home in Lexington Terrace. He encourages staff to become ambassadors of their community. His employment as a civil servant is simply an extension of his innate responsibility as a native Baltimorean. And additionally, he has, vest, he has a vested interest in preserving the integrity of Baltimore's character through active youth mentorship and the prevention of gun violence. Professional and community impacts eerily similar to that of Mr. Richard Lindisky Sr. So it is my honor to present this year's Richard Lindisky Sr. Award to my main apple scrapple, yeah. Mr. Kendall Abu Hakim. Good afternoon, everyone. In the interest of everyone's time and knowing that they are still tasked to be done, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. I'd like to first give praise to the creator of the heavens and the earth for allowing us to be here today. Thank you, Mr. Braxton, for your introduction and your support. It's a genuine pleasure to work with you as my supervisor. And being about 15 years my junior, it's hard not for me to see you as my younger brother as well. I'd like to say to all the distinguished public servants who are on this stage today, colleagues, family and friends, thank you for your presence. To my fellow nominees, it is a genuine pleasure and honor to share this day of recognition with you. Much appreciation to those organizers that made this day possible, and a special thank you to those officials who wrote letters of recommendation on my behalf, Councilman Costello and Councilman Dorsey. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, thanks for your leadership your energy and competitive spirit that you bring to such a demanding role as mayor of our city. For those of you who don't know how competitive our mayor is, if you find yourself in a casual conversation and a question comes up, what high school did you go to? <laughs> and anything that you say that is not Mirabeau, please be prepared to defend your alma mater. You know, I was sitting here and I was pondering just how competitive our mayor is. And it's something that I certainly can appreciate. I've seen him out in the field playing baseball during summer cookouts. I've seen him engaging our youth uh, at, at various activities around the city. But what really did it for me was about two weeks ago, we were at a press conference in Westport um, where we were, or the mayor was announcing the Build Better Be More initiative to uh, provide services in the way of removing uh, uh, trash, also from uh, graffiti, road resurfacing, as well as potholes. But in that press conference, the mayor looked over to Councilwoman Ramos and pointed out that she did not have as much paint on her as he had on him as they had been doing graffiti removal early in the Chum community. He then turned to Councilman 
Cohen and challenged him to pick up some trash even though he was not dressed for the occasion. <laughs> By the way, Mayor, I plan to research just how many Richard A. Ledinsky Senior Award winners came from Mervo compared to how many came from Carver. <laughs> Al Mayer, also being a fan of hip hop, will probably remember rapper Bone Crusher saying, I ain't never scared. <laughs> and for me, that means I'm willing to compete. It's this type of competitive spirit that is instrumental in my being the recipient of such a prestigious award. And I'd like to at this time acknowledge the Ladinsky family who I met this morning and it is a pleasure to uh, represent such a rich legacy established by Mr. Richard A. Ledinsky, Sr. So I thank you. So when I say compete, not necessarily competing against others, but competing against myself, challenging myself to join one more meeting challenging myself to take or make another phone call, challenging myself to have timely responses to inquiries, challenging myself to answer just a few more emails after my shift has ended, and challenging myself to build a strong team. There's also the challenge of saying, we can fix this. There is a solution. We can help before ever letting pessimism reign supreme. I guess things have really come full circle for me because a young, as a young boy some more than four decades ago, I competed in a competition just outside across the street. Some of you will remember Mayor Schaefer's trash ball campaign. Trash ball, neat game, everybody wins, that kind of thing. And on, and on this particular day, kids from all over Baltimore competed to see who could pick up the most trash within a certain time, and I was victorious. Fast forward, I find myself standing in this hollowed place, being recognized. being recognized for doing a job that I enjoy for a city that I love. Allah, thank you. I've been known to shed a tear too. I'll, I'll try to get it together. <laughs> Although we all walk different paths and they have individual goals, there is wisdom in the holy book of my faith that says, strive as though in a race towards all that is good. Since joining the city, it has been my desire to affect change from within. There are several external organizations doing some amazing work to improve Baltimore in so many areas, some of which I am a member, so it was natural for me to ask myself, how can I impact change? The term going viral has become such a part of our conversation that it has been my goal to provide a positive culture and organizational structure <clears throat> that is fair and consistent, opportunities for all to reach their full human potential, and confidence that these ideals can go viral too. Viral in the sense that individual employees can experience these ideals, take them home, and impact their families. These families can impact their communities, and these communities can ultimately have a positive impact on our city. I will continue to work within city government promoting these ideals and being confident that someday the combined effect 
of work being done externally and the growth of a positive culture and competitive spirit in the city's workforce will get us where we need to be sooner rather than later. At this time, I'd like to say thank you to all the public servants for everything that you do. Thanks to my DOT family under the leadership of Interim Director Corinne Johnson. A special thank you to DOT Maintenance Division, many of whom are here today. My colleagues, Keena Rucker and Luther Booz, the teams from Bridge Maintenance, Street Lighting, where it all began for me, Landscaping, Milling and Paving, Highway Maintenance, Sectors 1, 2, 3, and 4, Signs and Markings, Special Events, Facilities Maintenance, Street Cuts, and Administration at 520 Falls Way, my home away from home. Without you, this would not have been possible. Maintenance Division, where you at? Thanks to the many sister agencies, stakeholders, and business partners for their wonderful collaboration, and to the citizens of Baltimore for their patience and support. I want to bring special attention to this person. He not only nominated me for this awesome award, but for setting the public service bar high, being just a few months away from 50 years of service to the city of Baltimore. He is a former Ledensky Award winner and senior advisor to the Department of Transportation, Mr. Frank Murphy. Frank, thanks for recognizing something in me long before others knew of any value that I brought to the city. And I think we all can agree that after 50 years of service, one would have a discerning eye for talent. Frank, I really appreciate all the support, and I salute you. In closing, please indulge me as I share a few more thank yous to my wife, wife of 20 years, Pamela. You have been with me through it all. Thanks for being the balance. I love you. To my sister Bernice and brother William, <laughs> Thanks for your guidance and love. To my children, Kendall Jr., Kamala, Iman, and Hassan, for being my motivation and inspiration. I love you. It's rare that a black man in the city of Baltimore can call someone a genuine friend for 40 years. So to Dwayne, my best friend of more than 40 years. I appreciate you, black man. Thank you to so many other family and friends that play such a huge role in my life, but are too numerous to mention. To my father, Kenneth Blackston, whom I miss and pray the creator has granted him the highest station in paradise for having been a great dad, friend, and infinite source of wisdom, much of which still guides me today. To my lovely mother, Mary Blackston, for being a great mom, my biggest supporter, and infinite source of love and strength. I love you, mother dear. Please join me in a round of applause as I give my queen some of her many deserving flowers today. <laughs> Lastly, but just as important, to the community of believers in Islam, thanks for being a constant reminder of our duty to the Creator Thanks for sharing in a belief that humility is good. Thanks for sharing in a belief that charity is good. Thanks for sharing in a belief that patiently persevering is good. And thanks for sharing in a belief 
that the best among us are those that are most useful to the society. Thank you. Let's give it up for our award winner. So, if the entire family would join us on stage for the picture, you want the DOT family to come to? Maintenance, come on, all y'all. Everybody, everybody to the stage. Yeah, bring your fat heads. Please don't leave them down there. Bring them with you. Please.